Hi and welcome to the channel. Today is a light unpacking of ADT Links R43SG. In case you don't know, this is an M.2 NVMe to PCIe. I also made an introduction about ADT Link before and how you can order from their quirky website. So do check out that video for more info about them. It also came in a brown box with my real name and order number from them. And as you can see, ADT Link is a reputable brand that doesn't care about packaging. Anyway, these were the contents of the box. So this is the unit itself for the M.2 NVMe to PCIe by 16. And these are power connectors and stands. We'll check out later. Let's open it. So it's padded by a foam but the connector is not protected. So for the accessories, this for the stand. Let's remove this. Oh, it's quite long. I believe this is around 50 centimeters. So you have to slot your graphics card here. Then you have to plug this obviously to the motherboard. Oh, this can be removed. Seems that there's a protective film and I'm not even sure if it has to be removed. I have this graphics card from Colorful. Sorry for the dirty graphics card. But you will slot it like this. As for this, there's no instructions inside so I'm just going to assume things. So immediately I don't know what these screws are for. This seems to lock this side. So this looks like an M.2 screw but I'm not sure. So let's assemble the stand first. Okay, so now we have the stand. I have a few more screws which I don't know how I will use. So slot it in and it aligns just right. Then this will cover it, which makes sense since this is a thumb screw. Okay, so that's how it will look. I think I'm going to test a big graphics card later. So in here you can see that there are input. So this is an input and an input and an output. You can notice that this is a Dell DA. 8p input so that's a different power connector this is a standard 24 pin and this is a standard cpu 4 pin this is for output so you can plug the included connector here Let's make sure it's tight okay and then you can plug this to the graphics card like so okay so that's the graphics card part. Let's set this aside. So for this side, so the idea here is that any M.2 NVMe slot can be turned into a GPU slot. I have to focus on the term M.2 NVMe. There are laptops without M.2 NVMe but have M SATA, which is incompatible. Just like my laptop, it has an M SATA and is therefore incompatible. My point here is do check your laptop or device specs before buying. So for testing, I'll be using the ASRock Desk Mini X300, which will be my guinea pig. And then an external power supply, which is uh, somewhere there. Let me try if I can put it. It's here, this one. Let's do this first. For example, my Desk Mini has an M.2 NVMe slot, which is unused currently. So I'm going to plug this there. Okay, then secure it. Okay, so it seems secured now. Can, can we try to close this? Oh, it's too tight. Uh, I have to plug in a 24 pin cable like this and a CPU 4 pin just like this. So it's a bit janky. <laughs> so I'll plug the PSU now. Uh, no explosions. Looks good so far. And then I need to plug this. Okay, so what's left is to probably turn this on and hope for the best. Oh, it's on immediately. So the graphics card is on. Oh, there it is. That was amazing. So what's left is to test this. So I have benchmarks of the 1660 Super. However, this is a 5700G, so expect a bit weaker performance. Quite surprising. Work out of the box. Again, ADT Link is a reputable brand. <laughs> okay, as for post build comments, I was really surprised that it ran immediately without issues. Even the BIOS was displayed in the external GPU. As for testing games with CSGO and 1660 Super, it was more than 200 to 300 FPS and thus more than twice the performance of the 5700G CPU. I then tried to benchmark FF15 and the differences were pretty much negligible. At 1080p low settings, the 5700G and 1660 Super averaged at 107.66 FPS, a mere 3 FPS from my regular build. 
which is a 5800X on a regular test bench. At 1080p high settings, it averaged at 58.4 FPS, just 1.4 FPS away from my regular build. I also tried to slot in the fattest and heaviest GPU that I have, which is the ROG Strix RTX 3070. The platform had no problem handling its weight and size, though I am not sure with 4 slot GPUs. I then benchmarked FA15 again, and at 1080p high settings, it averaged at 113 FPS, which was 11% weaker than the regular build. At 1440p, it averaged at 93 FPS, which is around 5% weaker than the regular build. At this point, the difference in FPS could likely be attributed to the CPU difference. As to whether I would recommend this contraption, I think this should be used only as a lifeline rather than as an onset design of your build. Meaning, you have an old laptop that can't be used for games, but it has a decent CPU and an unused M.2 NVMe slot. Then, this could be a solution. Note, however, that your laptop will be a Frankenstein, you'd lose the portability aspect as it's not that quick to dismantle, unlike for example a Thunderbolt eGPU. Other considerations would be that you might need to cut out a part of your case so that you can close it tight. If you don't want that, then make sure to keep your screws somewhere so that you can close it when needed. You might also want to consider a custom case or housing or cabinet for your PSU and GPU as it will take desk space and also it will create a cable clutter. As for another positive side, I actually see a use case for this with the Desk Mini X300 or probably with a regular laptop. Say you may want to bring your Desk Mini from your dorm to your parents' house on a weekly basis. Though again, it's not quick to disassemble. So I can see myself leaving the build alone after a month of disassembly and assembly cycles. Okay, I think that's all for now. Let me know in the comments below on what you think of this contraption. Thanks for watching. Do like or dislike and subscribe for more unboxing and benchmarks. Bye!